a battle of 1-0 teams in the Patriot League. It's the Fordham Rams welcoming the Lehigh Mountain Hawks to Jack Coffey Field on this Saturday afternoon. Greetings from the Bronx alongside Tim McMaster. I'm Andrew Bogish. As always, thanks for watching football with us. So here we go, Tim. Teams coming off wins to open conference play and very similar teams squaring off here today. Yeah, similar all the way back to the past, right? They both have legendary coaches who have departed. New coaches are kind of trying to get things in place. They hope to improve this season. They've done that. And last time out for both of these teams coming off dramatic last-minute victories. So that sets up a good one here where the winner takes over first first place in this league with and maybe alone depending on the other action. Lehigh shows up here today with one of the best run defenses overall defenses in the Patriot League that's led by <laughs> stud linebacker Keith Wetzel. Yeah senior linebacker exactly what you want in the middle of the defense a guy that can make things happen make changes if he needs to 10 or more tackles in three straight games for Wetzel he's been a force two and a half sacks last time out against Colgate when this team as a whole had seven sacks. Last time Fordham was on their home field Tim Demore engineered a a big one over Richmond then last week on the road a last second touchdown throw having a nice sophomore season yeah he's a guy that's quickly when you're a sophomore and you started as a freshman you move up those rankings and he's already finding himself in the rankings as far as career goes with Fordham dramatic come a uh, win late in the game against Georgetown on the road he'll make a mistake here and there but he's also proved that he can make the dramatic throw and pull victories out for this team couldn't ask for better conditions for this good matchup 1-0 Fordham 1-0 Lehigh the open and kickoff is next on the Patriot League Network. Welcome back to Jack Coffey Field alongside Tim McMaster. I'm Andrew Bogish. Again, thanks for being with us as 1-0 Fordham plays host to 1-0 Lehigh. The Mountain Hawks coming off their second bye of the season, so maybe a little more fresh than Fordham is on this Saturday afternoon, but both still living off really dramatic wins, Tim, as you went through the very top of the broadcast. And now the key for both is to build off those wins. Lehigh has actually put together back-to-back -to -back wins. Fordham, after their last win here on their home floor, or home court turf against Richmond, they then went and got roughed up by Yale. They certainly don't want to have a repeat of that here today. Yeah. There's Fordham head coach Joe Conlon walking the sideline down below us. Coach Conlon finally has a win on this field. Rams were winless at home a year ago, dropped their opener to Central Connecticut State, but then that Richmond win at the end of September finally got them a home win. They tack on the win last week at Georgetown, and this program feeling good about itself as they are just about set to take the field. They won the toss, did Fordham elected to defer, so Andrew Mevis will tee it up, and we'll see the Lehigh offense first here this afternoon. And again, these Mountain Hawks coming off an off week, their second of the season. Two weeks ago, one of the teams that kept Colgate struggling went up to upstate New York and got a victory there scored late and they made a defensive stand at the goal line to get that 21-14 win. Jalen Floyd number one and George Portorial number two are back to return for Lehigh as Andrew Mevis gets set to kick off for the Rams. This is a head-to-head -head dominated by Lehigh. They've won 24 of the 31 all-time meetings but Fordham has won five of the last six. Last year a near 30-point win for the Rams in Pennsylvania. Mavis puts his right foot to it. Puerto Real will make the catch and come out of his own end zone. Floyd told him not to. Puerto Real did it himself and he's just shy of the 25 yard line. So here come the Mountain Hawks on offense. A unit that scores just over 13 points per game, which is six best in the Patriot League. Puerto Real, who just had that return, one of their leading wide receivers for quarterback Tyler Monaco, a senior from Davie, Florida. Three touchdown passes, four interceptions. He's also scored on the ground, has Monaco, and he'll start his afternoon in the shotgun. Quick to the outside and a quick catch, and then brought down right away is Puerto Real. The tackle by Nasir McNair for Fordham. <laughs> Lehigh playing this one without Jalen Burbage. 11 catches, 124 yards, got injured in that Colgate win. Not available today.
second and four. Monaco has to escape. He's got the first down and sliding the safety shy of the 40 yard line. The Mountain Hawks smooth the change right away. Yeah, nice job by Monaco there that he just took a quick look downfield, saw a wide open turf in front of him and quickly capitalized and scrambled for that first down. Didn't waste any time pulling the ball down. Third straight throw, screen at the top of your screen. And a couple of yards there for Lehigh. Ellis Taylor, the tackle for Fordham. The catch was made by Devin Bibbins. 28 catches for Bibbins, 26 for Puerto Real. And both have had big games in the past against this Fordham defense. This is second and six for Lehigh. Swing pass, it's Hope out of the backfield. And the second defender to him knocks him down. That's Tony, Anthony Tony Atoya in on the stop. A lot of short passes so far for Lehigh. Running backs out of the backfield, little screens. They get to really look down the field, but they're kind of chipping away at this Fordham defense. Five yards here, six yards there, but a lot through the air. Third and two, two minutes in for Lehigh. Play clock goes under 10 on third and two from Monaco. They're gonna run it on third and short, going straight ahead. And a yard short, they're denied. Cunningham and Greenhagen, as you'd expect, those two stud middle linebackers for Fordham combining on the tackle. Yeah, we're gonna call those names a lot today. Cunningham and Greenhagen in the middle of that defense. Um, really the, the fingers of that defense. And on a big play early, when you wanna set the tone on defense, both those guys coming up, reminded to make a big play and to get Lehigh to punt. Austin Henning is the punter for Lehigh. Fair catch called for and made. Shy of the 20-yard line by Fotis Coco Sulis. So the Fordham defense gets off the field quickly. And their offense will come out when we come back. Fordham and Lehigh just underway on the Patriot League Network. Welcome back to Jack Coffee Field. While we were away, the Fordham Rams won their, ran their first two offensive plays of the afternoon, a couple of runs for Zach Davis, and all of a sudden, it is third and one for Fordham. From their own 29-yard line, after a good opening possession from their defense, a third straight run. This is the first down, and Morse trying to stay on his feet and just failing to do so or Davis might have been gone. Yeah, he was one step away from being off and running, but quite a difference here, quite a difference between the Fordham attack and what we're seeing in this first set of plays versus what Lehigh did. Lehigh with all the short little passes. Fordham has come out with the attitude that we're going to run the football, and so far so good as they're up to the 45. Tim Demore at the sophomore quarterback for Fordham, keeps it on the ground, this time good penetration by the Mountain Hawks. Eric Slater had Davis stand around the ankles. Demorat showed last week that he can throw it when he needs to. When they were down against Georgetown, but they would much prefer to start things with the ground game, prove that, prove that they can do that, and then let the pass play off of them. They certainly have developing weapons into Keith Carter and Coco Sulis. Demorat throws it away. It's Keith Wetzel, the interception. Wetzel dragged down by the quarterback inside the 20. 
to Morad under pressure, an ill-advised throw, and Lehigh makes him pay. Yeah, he was looking for Davis, but it seemed like Davis wasn't quite looking back at the football yet. The miscommunication. He also did a bit of a jump throw there, just off the mark behind Davis, directly to the defender. And Wetzel, we talked about him off the, the top, the plays he's able to do. Two and a half sacks last time out against Colgate. That time dropping into coverage a little bit with the big interception for this defense. It sets up the Mountain Hawks offense inside the 20, first and 10 for DeMorat, his eighth interception of the season. It's a big number, but the quality, so to speak, of the interceptions has been an issue as well for Fordham. They've come at bad times, bad decisions. They've given the other team momentum. And in this instance, it gives Lehigh a short field to work with. Nate Hope, who caught a pass, on the first drive, gets a run here, and gets him closer to points. Yeah, and Hope's a guy out of that backfield that they like to throw the football to. Quiet Bay's got a 60-yard in his career, and he's more the weapon that you can get it to out of the backfield. Nine yards on the run on first down for Hope. Already inside the Fordham 10-yard line. Hope again. Not much room this time behind his right guard. In fact, he's going to lose a yard back to the 10. This Fordham defense did a good job against Georgetown last week of holding them to field goals early on, and, and that's what you hope to do as a defense right here. Get off the field, hold Lehigh to a field goal attempt after the turnover. Pick up the offensive. Bibbins in motion for Lehigh. Designed roll from Monaco on third and two. Looking, end zone, a jump, and it is a touchdown. Austin Dombaugh caught it against the tough D of McNair, and he held on on his way down in the back of the end zone. The first of the season on the receiving end for Dambaugh. Austin Henning for the extra point. Nearly blocked, puts it through, and Lehigh converts off the turnover. DeMorant threw it away, Wetzel brought it back inside the 20, and three plays later, the Mountain Hawks in the end zone for a 7-0 lead on the Patriot League Network. We are back here at Jack Coffee Field. Andrew Bogus and Tim McMaster with you. The Rams, their second possession. Zach Davis high-stepping his way out near the 45-yard line. The Rams' opening possession ended with a Tim DeMoran interception. Lehigh ended up inside the Fordham 20. Got in the end zone on a touchdown pass from Monaco to Dambaugh. So now Fordham back on the attack, just about midway through the opening quarter. More Zach Davis to the outside this time. And he is safely out of bounds near midfield, although there is a flag, and now there's more than one. There's one behind the line of scrimmage, and then one in the secondary. Probably at least a hold on Fordham, and we'll see if that second flag will offset it. Fordham came out that first possession and ran the ball very successfully. It was obviously when they went to the air and DeMorat's first passing attempt of the day that they turned it over on the interception. So they go right back to the ground here. A couple of handoffs to, uh, to Davis once again. Two personal fouls called against Fordham. One an illegal blindside block, and then one for extracurricular activities in the secondary. That play was going out of bounds, so the Fordham offense is all the way backed up now to their own 16-yard line. This is second and 29. Can you do the math, Tim? Uh, something like that. It feels like the type of down and distance that leads to a draw play. And right on cue, smothering that draw play 
is Lehigh. Went to Davis and he went nowhere. At this point, you just want to chip away a little bit. Set up the best punt possibility. Maybe you pop one here and, and get lucky, but for the most part, you're probably going to end up punting, but you'd rather not punt from your 20 if you can gain some sort of yardage here. Jackson Michaels made that last stop, running again on third and forever. And at the very least, as Tim just said, Andrew Mevis can punt from the field of play. But this is now two Fordham possessions, an interception, and two personal fouls on the same play, backing them up 30 yards. Yeah, so they actually turn it over on the interception. This is basically a turnover when you talk about that amount of, of penalties on one play. Got to clean up uh, the on and off the field stuff here for Fordham. Mevis is the punter as well as the place kicker. This one's going to bounce in Fordham's favor inside the 40. And they will finally touch it down there. And the Mountain Hawks will come back on the field. And certainly a good job last time out, Tim, by Lehigh to get in the end zone off the turnover. They have this 7-0 lead, and we're back in just a second on the Patriot League Network. The Lehigh Mountain Hawks are 1-0 in Patriot League play. Fordham is 1-0 inside this conference as well. Holy Cross began the day at 1-0 as well. And Lehigh back on the field. For the last time out, they got in the end zone. Yeah, can't draw up a better start to the game than Lehigh has gotten here. Even though they started with the ball and, and didn't really move it, the turnover on the interception and then the... Uh, now they get it because of all the penalties, a chance to really take control of this game early on on the road. Throwing on first down off the play fake. Time for Monaco. Hit as he, got through, as he threw. And that ends up nowhere close to a receiver. Multiple Rams running Monaco over. Yeah, good pressure on the quarterback by Fordham. And on their first possession, it was so many short plays, and then when they got the touchdown, they rolled him out. He really hasn't proven, or this offensive line hasn't proven yet that they can really uh, protect Monaco in the pocket. He was benched in their game against Merrimack two games ago, but then bounced back in a nice way. That's almost intercepted. Turvin Hilton jumped the screen and almost had six for Fordham. And that's the type of play, it's all about preparation, right? Hilton knew what was coming off the snap, saw it, he's there in the perfect amount of time, and just can't quite bring it in. That's why he's a defensive back, not a wide receiver. Third and 10 for Lehigh, but to finish the point on Monaco before the near pick six, pulled from the Merrimack game, came back for Colgate, got hit in the end zone, fumbled for a Colgate touchdown immediately in that game, but stayed in there and ends up authoring a nice road win. Trouble from behind here, and down he goes. Ellis Taylor from the backside creates the three and out, but there's an injured defender. We'll see who the injured Ram is as they check on him, then a Lehigh punt when we come back on the Patriot League Network. Had a nice chat this morning with Coach Comlin about his three transfers, Coste being one of them. What good young men and good players they were, also highly recommended. Pressure on the punt, Henning gets it away. That one checks up for Leha to finally down it back across the 35 yard line. So now this Fordham offense gets its third chance on the field in this first quarter, Tim, and at the very least they want to go a little more forward than they have the first two times. Yeah, and really that first possession, they were moving the ball nicely on the ground before the interception. Uh, second possession, it was obviously the penalty. So settle down here. You get the ball back. Your defense is playing well. They're getting good pressure on Lehigh. So I would assume we'll maybe see them go back to the run here to keep things quiet. Little pitch to the left. Naeem Mayfield out of the backfield. His first touch of the afternoon, bouncing it outside and a hard tackle near the marker of the far sideline. Divine Buckram was up high on Mayfield to slam him down, but only after he got nine yards. Little pitch there from DeMorat to Mayfield. 
Davis comes right back in from Mayfield now on second and one. Oh, check that, it's Trey Sneed now, the third Fordham running back. The bigger body of the three, and he moves the chains. It's a first down. And you were mentioning the transfers. Sneed, one of them, and a nice run there to get things moving. New set of downs for Fordham. Just shy of midfield. Off a play fake. A slam was behind Coco Sulis. Broken up back there by Riley O'Neill. And he went to Coco Sulis over the middle. It looked like Ferraro on the outside actually maybe had an extra step, whereas Coco Sulis was pretty well covered. It was a little bit behind him. And another dangerous throw from Demora. It's Sneed straight ahead. Crossed his midfield with a couple. Third and long coming up for Fordham. And this is really the first time we've seen a straight passing type situation for DeMora. We'll see how he handles it here on third and long. He's got four wide receivers with him here on third and seven to be exact, just across midfield. His team down seven, thanks in large part to his interception. Lehigh's been very good getting to the quarterback the last couple of weeks. Here comes a blitz. Coco Sulis has it go off his arms and incomplete. That one looked a little bit behind him and it's fourth down. Yeah, again behind the receiver. Coco Sulis had a chance at that one if he can reach back. I'm not sure if he would have been able to get the first down or not, the defender right there, but certainly would have had a chance to turn that upfield. But once again, the throw coming behind. He and his quarterback go to the sideline talking about that misconnection as Andrew Mevis comes back out to punt. Nose down for this punt for Mevis. Jalen Floyd, basket catch near his 10 yard line. Worst starting position of the afternoon for Lehigh but they continue to lead 7-0 here in the Bronx. Someone's gonna leave here 2-0 and oh in Patriot League play. You know, the Mountain Hawks, Tim, they come in today, they've won their last two games after getting roughed up by a couple of ranked opponents, Villanova and UC Davis, but they win a defensive slugfest, 10-3 over Merrimack, and then 21-14 win two weeks ago at Colgate, Zathan Hill scored the game-winning points with 33 seconds left, but then they had to make a tackle. Divine Buckram did that at the one-yard line to finally deny Colgate. So they certainly have found their stride over the last couple of games. Yeah, and the defense has really led the way, although you mentioned it. In, in less than 30 seconds, they allowed Colgate to, to make it interesting, but the defense is what's going to get them there. Monaco's got his tight end, Alex Snyder over the middle. A big gain on first down. Out to the 34-yard line. Finally, some good protection there by the offensive line from Monaco. Seventh catch of the year for Alex Snyder, a sophomore from Georgia, and a tight end catch is a rarity for Lehigh. So he's got seven catches coming into today. The position, Tim, had 10 total catches over the previous two seasons. Well, they like these little short passes. They like to hit their running backs out of the backfield as opposed to hitting the tight end over the middle. Rashawn Allen gets the call there. Allen gets four on first down, setting up a second and six. Four receivers now for Lehigh. We'll see if Monaco dials something up. Getting late in the first quarter here in the Bronx. Rams have that sniffed out. DeAndre Carter, Ryan Greenhagen all around. Rashawn Allen pushing him back almost to the original line of scrimmage. It's third and nine for Lehigh. Fordham defense once again getting in there, whether it's a pass play or a run play. They've done a nice job breaking down this offensive line, getting in the backfield. 
and offensive line starting the same five sim for the third straight week for Lehigh. That continuity experience running a couple of freshmen as well had paid off the last couple of weeks. They need to protect Monaco here. He's going deep for Bibbins. Overthrew him. Good coverage by Hilton, who's talking a good game as well as they come back down the field. Yeah, and Bibbins and Hilton kind of jockeying down the sideline, both of them with their uh, with the hands. Certainly not pass interference either way, but uh, aggressive play down the field. Good job by Bibbins. George Porterial was talking to the Fordham sideline earlier in this game. There seems to be some chirping between these two in this first quarter. Another Austin Henning punt is coming up. Coco Sulis at his own 31 yard line brings his offense back on the field. Fordham still looking for its first quality possession of the afternoon, playing from behind here. Still down seven, nothing and still looking could really just stay on the field for an extended drive right now, too. Yeah, and as good as the defense is playing here, you'd like to give them a little bit of a break. It seems like that Fordham defense has been on the field so much in this first quarter. So put together a constructive drive here if you're Fordham. Get the ball over midfield. As you can see, they begin this one with four wide receivers. Demora to the top of your screen, and Wetzel will ride to Keith Carter out of bounds. And Riley O'Neill was kind of coming around the edge there, untouched to hit Demorat, but Demorat able to get rid of it in time. O'Neill still getting the hit in on the quarterback. Last two games for this Lehigh defense, 13 sacks over the last three, 29 tackles for loss. It's an aggressive front. Safety is coming to the line of scrimmage as well. Have to be aware of everybody. Davis has room. Davis across the 50. One man to beat for Davis. And he's out of bounds with a 20 yard line. That's the big run Fordham needed from Zach Davis. And that's a play where Fordham able to take advantage of the aggressiveness you were just speaking of. Lehigh on another blitz off the left side and it kind of opens things up. They get it by the blitzer and then off to the races. Safety has to track down Davis. Wetzel had a shot as Davis came through the first hole, and then Taiji Leach is who got Davis out. First and 10 for Fordham. Back to Davis. To the 20 he goes. Big defensive changes for Lehigh. Davis Maxey made that last tackle, put his shoulder into Davis's right side, then goes right to his sideline. Demorat keeps it himself on second down and forces his way to the 12. It's been handing it off on that play on the uh, the option play all day long, the, pun, the uh, pass run option, that time finally keeping it and you, you hand it off enough times, the defense is going to kind of assume that the handoff is coming and that time, great job keeping it around the end. That's exactly what I was going to say. He does that, he keeps it himself just enough to remind you that it is an option. Handoff here, stumbling forward for a couple is Davis. Give the tackle to Pete Hafner, the other quality linebacker in the middle of that linebacker level for Lehigh. Hafner came into today, 42 tackles, four and a half for loss, playing next to Wetzel. Final 20 seconds, opening quarter. Fordham looking for the tying points with their quarterback running again. Takes a shoulder to the six. And that RPO offense now really starting to take an effect. And now if you're Lehigh, you can't count on either. Now that Demorat's kept it a couple times. We've seen him run right, now he runs left. We'll see what they do when the second quarter begins. The first is now in the books. Lehigh has the lead, had the momentum, but Fordham driving their best position of the afternoon, the second quarter when we come back on the Patriot League Network. Second quarter in the Bronx alongside Tim McMaster. I'm Andrew Bogish. Thanks for joining us as a pair of 1-0 teams do battle here on the Patriot League Network. Those Lehigh points off a Tim DeMorat interception. Three plays later, they were in the end zone. But now Fordham having its best offensive drive of the afternoon has a third and four 
from the Lehigh six yard line. So they've got options shy of just scoring points here as Demorat has tacked on some rushing yards on this drive to help them move down the field, but still looking to find his rhythm through the air. We'll see if they go back to that uh, run pass option. And in this position, third and four, the opportunity to get that first down before getting in the end zone. Davis lines up behind Demorat. And gives it to him, sprinting towards the goal line. He's still going. And there's the whistle. Looks like Davis fell on the defender, tried to lunge towards the goal line. That's good enough for first down. He's got a full head of steam, but then the defender just kind of gets under him, but he's not technically down at that point. First and goal from the two. Davis looking for a hole, touchdown, Fordham. The hole opens up again on that play and Davis able to get through there. He was the workhorse on that drive, so might as well give him the touchdown at the end as Fordham ties this game up. It's his third rushing touchdown of the season. Riley O'Neal tried to get to him in time, but couldn't. And now Mevis for the extra point to tie the game. These have been a little bit more of an adventure than Fordham would like. Mevis has had one blocked recently, missed one in their last home game against Richmond. This one, no issues. And it knots us at seven here, early going in the second quarter. A really solid junior campaign continues for Zach Davis. Already nearing 100 yards with the touchdown. One big run really kick-started this drive and his team needed it, Tim. Obviously 7-0, not the worst test in the world, but Lehigh had all the momentum in this one and the Rams can slow things down right now with this big drive. Yeah, and Davis already four 100-yard games this season. He's averaging just under 100 yards per game and well on his way to a fifth year. And we really said it at the beginning of that drive. They needed to take some time off the clock, let the defense rest a little bit, go on an extended drive, and they did it on the ground. And really, Lehigh, even though they've stopped Fordham offensively, they really haven't shown that they can stop that running attack. It's been other things. It's been Fordham stopping itself, really. So keep the ball on the ground until Lehigh stops you. And he's got these 91 yards against the number one rush defense in the Patriot League in Lehigh that came in giving up just 74 yards per game on the ground that he's already passed that before halftime. Yeah, and it's, it's really two weeks in a row for Fordham because Georgetown entered that game a week ago with the great defense that that was kind of their calling card and Fordham able to move the ball up and down the field against the Hoyas. Mavis sits the crossbar <laughs> on the kickoff. Don't see that often. So starting from their own 25 will be the Mountain Hawks. Not much win today, at least in regards to what we've had earlier this week in the New York City area. Wednesday, Thursday, and then yesterday, just nasty win. But today, mostly on the calm side to take nothing away from Mimas. Maybe that had a little bit of a, a push <laughs> behind it. Back on the attack go the Mountain Hawks. They're running with Hope on first down. And Nate Hope has himself to the 28-yard line. Hope had a big catch and run, covered 60 yards on their go-ahead drive against Colgate. Tyler Monaco off to that start, the touchdown pass after the Demorad interception. Addison Schaup, a junior from Georgia, is the other Lehigh quarterback that has seen some playing time this season. In fact, it was Schaup in relief who ran for the deciding touchdown against Merrimack two games ago. Monaco gets away from trouble and then dives down the 31 yard line with two defenders waiting for him. Yeah, and Fordham on the edges is where they've been able to really get the pass rush going against Monaco. This time you see coming around, he's able to escape it and, and move it upfield. That time the, the pocket broke down a little bit, but Fordham, if they can continue to put the pressure on Monaco like this, it's gonna be a long afternoon for Lehigh offensively. Jeremy Imperati had that pressure around the right tackle. Third and four for Lehigh. Open, 
is Bibbins. First down and more for Devin Bibbins up to the 45 yard line. He was kind of able to uh, escape the backfield and, and hide out uncovered there. Found spot. Right back to the air, right back to Bibbins and falling out of bounds with a second consecutive first down. This is really the best consistency we've seen out of this Lehigh offense so far today, putting together a few first downs. Tyler Monaco, a first year starter for Lehigh. Hope pulling a tackler with him to the 42 yard line. Brad Mays was the quarterback last year through three interceptions in a four to win in Pennsylvania. Second and eight for the Mountain Hawks. That's Greenhagen creeping straight ahead. They block him. Monaco going deep down the seam. Intercepted on a dive. It's Hilton. And Monaco took a little too long on that one. Play action he was under center. We haven't seen a lot of that today, but the play action pass and he allowed time for the defensive back to get over there. Hilton make a great interception, the diving play. He almost had a pick six earlier in this game, jumping a screen pass. He's not the primary defender as you can see there. He reads that as Tim said, comes across to his left and makes a great diving interception. Fordham starts at its own 12 off the pick. With a Davis run, shrugs the first contact and then Michaels drives him down across the 20. Davis loses his helmet in that, so he's gotta come off the field for a play. So the turnover is leveled up now, one apiece. Of course, the difference in field position. Lehigh's turnover led directly to a score. Fordham's got a long field ahead of them here. Nine more yards for Davis puts him right at the century mark with the entire second quarter still to go. It's Sneed finding space and carrying Mountain Hawks with him to the 34 yard line. Just huge holes in that offensive line there, creating. It doesn't matter who Fordham has in the backfield taking advantage. Sneed a Rutgers transfer and he played for the Scarlet Knights. First year in the Bronx. It took him a while to kind of get through some injuries, some nagging injuries, but last week against Georgetown, ran the ball well. It was seemed like it was the first time he really was fully healthy and ready to go for this Fordham team. Nick Zakel called for a false start, the Fordham left tackle. This need has been, Mayfield's been more of the kind of change of pace running back. Sneed more of the short yardage kind of guy. So that last run, one of the longest ones of the season for him, but then immediately backed up by the penalty. So this is first and 15. Dequise Carter underneath. Jalen Floyd. And John Safeman combining on the hit. Demora doing a good job of, of moving up in the pocket there to create some time, but not a lot of options downfield. It goes with the check down. It's a positive play. Carter and Hamziel Zayat to the top of the formation for Fordham. Ferraro and Coco Sulis to the bottom. Davis back in it, running back. Demora looking to his left. Coco Sulis the catch. Could not escape Safeman though. Nice tackle by the senior in the open field against the smaller shiftier Coco Sulis. Wobbly ball kind of coming out there, but Coco Sulis able to break it in. But it was on target. Yep. And the first couple of throws from Demorat weren't. One was picked off, one was a deflected ball that hung in the air and could have been picked.
Wetzel picked up by Davis. The slant to catch. El Zayata first down into Lehigh territory. And you can see Demorat starting to build that confidence. The one good throw you mentioned on target to Coco Sulis. And this one even better as he hits him in stride. Able to catch it on the run, turn it upfield. Nicely done, too, by Zach Davis, picking up the blitzing linebacker. First and 10 for Fordham, now at the Mountain Hawk 47-yard line. It's Davis skipping his way to the second level, spinning inside the 35-yard line. The yards after contact have been impressive for Davis as well. But the one move, he gets through the line, then he makes the one little juke to his right to free him up even more, and then the contact, and he still carries the defenders for four or five more yards. And Tim, you mentioned this a couple of minutes ago, Fordham went down to Georgetown last weekend, almost doubled in a number of categories what Georgetown had been giving up on average coming into the game. 81 more rush yards last week for Fordham than the Hoyas had been allowing. And now Davis is over 100 against the defense, giving up only 74 per game. Davis will come out for a little breather, but don't expect him to be out for too long the way he's getting the workload today. Second and eight after his last run, so Sneed is back in to the left of DeMorat. Four down linemen for Lehigh. Linebackers creep up. Sneed runs right through him inside the 25 yard line. Trey Sneed doing a good job off the sideline. Third and short coming for Fordham. And you mentioned the linebackers sneaking up, and they are, but they're not plugging the holes. They're filling up the line, but it's allowing the Fordham running backs, once they get through that line, to have extra yardage because the, the linebackers are already behind them. Sneed stays in, gets an instruction from DeMora. Gets the handoff from his quarterback, and this time Lehigh breaks into that backfield and brings him down short of the first down. So decision time here for Fordham, fourth and short. Looks like they'll keep the offense on the field. Crowd likes the aggressiveness on fourth and one. Almost the same formation, but now it's Davis behind DeMorad and Lynch, the tight end, on the right side instead of the left. Here goes Davis, puts his head down, and he gets pushed back by Lehigh. It'll be about the spot. Yep. And Lehigh is pointing one way, Fordham pointing the other, but it'll be a first down. Yeah, the officials pointing the more important way, and they say first down, not by a lot, but the chains move behind Davis. And Lehigh defense made one play in the backfield. Bartek Ribba, Ribga, number 52, was up there trying to push Davis back, but got to him just a hair late. Davis swallowed up again in the scrum. Davis on the Fordham becoming maybe a little predictable on first down, just running the ball on first. At one point here, got to hit that play action on first down or just throw it. Just a yard for Davis, so it's second and nine. Davis, not much room again. Jalen Floyd's in there, Wetzel's getting up from that tackle. This is four straight runs that have maybe gone four yards total, Tim. Yeah, the run game was working so well early, but eventually you gotta get away from it and vary the offense, and now you're in a clear passing down, which is gonna make it a little easier for Lehigh to figure out what they're gonna do. Four wide receivers on third down for Fordham. Play clock at five. Joe Conlon was thinking about a timeout. Demorat's pass is tipped. 
and then almost caught by a, a diving MJ Wright. And Wright was open on the in route. He definitely had a step on the defender. DeMora saw it. Everything was going perfectly except the defender on the line, getting a hand up in the air. Big deflection for Lehigh. Andrew Mevis from the left hash mark. Here's a look at the pass again from DeMorat. Couldn't see there who got his hand up for the Mountain Hawks, but that defense did its job there, standing up, stopping the Fordham drive, and maybe only allowing three. Mavis's kick is through, and the Rams have their first lead of the afternoon. It's 10-7 here in the Bronx. Getting late first half in a battle of 1-0 teams here inside the Patriot League. And at the moment, Fordham has the lead on the Patriot League Network. We're back here at Jack Coffee Field. It's a big weekend for Fordham football, not just this home game today against Lehigh, but Chase Edmonds is back in New York. His Arizona Cardinals playing the New York Giants yesterday. Chase owns basically every single offensive record at Fordham and a handful of Patriot League records himself. And he's etching out a nice little career behind David Johnson in the desert alongside Kyler Murray right now. Yeah, it's a good time to be in the desert. Kyler Murray, the number one overall pick, is settling nicely there at quarterback, and, and they're nice together. It's, it's a good backfield, the two running backs, and nowadays in the NFL, being the number two back for the most part is more of a, a 1B situation. And with the two touchdowns we saw the last couple of weeks, he's gonna be seeing more time on the field for Arizona. People were wondering if Chase could make an appearance here today, but I think, uh, your NFL travel schedule can <laughs> Trump sneaking back up yeah. to the Bronx. But it certainly helps your program as Mevis puts one through the end zone again. This one misses the crossbar. It certainly helps your program when you're putting not just players into the NFL, but the guys when they get there are productive as well. Yeah, and, and what a career he had at Fordham, obviously, and the success this, this school had with him in the backfield and, and now in the NFL, and he's getting it done. The records that he doesn't have in the Patriot League are because his senior season was compromised by injuries. Didn't allow Chase to really put an exclamation point on a tremendous four-year run. A young man that was looked at by most schools as a defensive back and Ford was one of the few places that was gonna let him be a running back. He came here and to use the cliche, the rest is history and all good history for this Fordham program and for him as well. Yeah, Fordham was in recruiting on him early on and wanted him to be a running back right away. And they, I know they got a little nervous during his senior year in high school that some of the big, big schools may come knocking, but, uh, but they didn't want him to play running back, so Edmonds ended up here. There were some nerves, too, between his, I guess, junior and senior year after Joe Moorhead had initially left to go to Penn State, the head coach, where Chase thought about transferring, but he stuck around, then couldn't stay healthy as Monaco sticks one on his tight end, Snyder, and just like that, Lehigh's in Fordham territory. We talked about them not going to the tight end that often overall, but they must have seen something in the film this week about this Fordham defense, because that's twice they've been able to find Snyder down that seat. On the ground, Greenhagen turns around to Allen after a good run, or excuse me, that's Zathan Hill. It's Hill that takes the hit from number 47 in Maroon. Second of four coming up for Lehigh. Hill again tripped up from behind, falls forward for one. A little slow developing there on the give to Hill. Yeah, to the point where Cunningham was almost there to take the handoff. It took so long for them to get the ball to Hill, and then Cunningham able to get his uh, hands on the feet. See Cunningham coming around the end, and he's in the backfield. Third and three for Lehigh. Trying to keep this drive going, trying to get some points to answer the 10 in a row scored by Fordham. Monaco coming near side, throwing back the other way, and Snyder's wide open. Chase to the 20, to the 10, tripped up and reaching. He's down near the two yard line. 
quarterback rolls right, all the receivers roll right, and then they just kind of trickle the tight end the other way, and nobody noticed him on the Fordham defense. Great design, and then it was Cunningham trying to come across. Hilton is the one that gets there at the end. Back on the ground with Hill reaching, and he's denied. Second and goal coming up for Lehigh. So Snyder has been a weapon here for Lehigh today. And the Mountain Hawks needed a drive like this to take back some momentum. We'll see how it actually ends, but so far so good, getting right up against the Fordham goal line. Both teams have all three of their timeouts left as we approach the two minute mark here in the second quarter. It's Hill going nowhere, another slow developing play, and then Taylor drills him, and now Fordham will use its first timeout with 1.52 on the clock. Almost as if there's confusion as of whether Monaco's actually handing the ball off or keeping it. This one, again, takes a long time, and then there's nowhere to go for Monaco once he gets it. Well, we've seen a lot of variations now of this RPO offense, but I can't remember a running back taking the handoff standing still as Hill has now done twice. A big play from near the goal line for Lehigh after this. This is a 34 yard catch and run. Great design by Lehigh. Their big tight end Alex Snyder almost gets in the end zone. Glenn Cunningham just cuts him down. The Mountain Hawks not yet in the end zone still facing a third and goal now from the Fordham four. Nice afternoon, nice half for Alex Snyder. And the key there is holding that block as the tight end long enough to sell the fact that everyone else is going the other direction, and then he was able to sneak out. Snyder, one of four receivers in this formation. Puerto Real's in motion to the bottom of your screen. Now, between Snyder and Dambaugh, Monaco throws the other way for Bibbins. It's a touchdown. Big drive late in the first half for Lehigh, and it ends with another Monaco Bibbins connection. And you see Bibbins working on Hilton, and Hilton kind of lost his balance a little bit there on the breakaway. Freed up plenty of room for Bibbins to score, and then they get to his face a little bit afterwards. And they've been talking all afternoon long, and now Bibbins has the most recent 1v1 win. His Mountain Hawks are back on top. Austin Hennings, PAT, makes it 14-10, Lehigh. They score the first seven points of the game, give up the next 10, and now get in the end zone here to take the lead again just before halftime on the Patriot League Network. The life of a quarterback, you throw a touchdown pass, you go sit down apparently by yourself, put a headset on and talk to your coaches up here by us, but deserved High fives from his defensive teammates. That's a heck of a first half for Tyler Monaco. Yeah, the percentage is great, 10 for 14, and he's done a real good job. The one pick, obviously, was a an ill-timed throw down the middle, but he's been very good. And you know that conversation with the coaching staff is the good kind after the touchdown pass where you put the headset on and they say, all right, great job, this is what you did right. It's much better than when you put the headset on after that interception. And this is a young man who was in somewhat of a danger of, of getting jumped by Addison Schaup. Two games ago against Merrimack, Monaco was pulled. Schaup let a comeback win. Monaco started their next game against Colgate, but began that game with a fumble in the end zone for a Raider touchdown. They did not go to Schaup in that one. He, in fact, never played against Colgate. And Monaco, with a good game, got them back from that early turnover for points to get a win on the road. And off the Coco Sulis return, back out comes the Fordham offense with 95 seconds and two timeouts to work with. And Lehigh really allowed Monaco to get his confidence going early in this one because those first couple series, it was a lot of throws to the running backs out of the backfield, a lot of quick passes before they had him throw it downfield much. Little confusion here by Fordham. DeKeese Carter on and off the field, and now a flag drops. And there's the flag for 12 men in the huddle. And I think Fordham might have escaped that penalty until Carter kind of started and stopped leaving and that caught everybody's attention. And then the flag came out. 
So now they start at their own 26 yard line, first and 15. Hafner fakes the blitz for Lehigh. Demore right over the middle. It's a cross for El Zayat. Spins back to the middle for a couple, eluding Hafner. The tackle by Riley O'Neill. Yeah, and El Zayat really uncovered over the middle. The zone finds a nice slot there, wide open, and then a nice cut back to get an extra three, four yards. A lot going on there. Movement on both sides. Austin Glazer call for a false start. So now each tackle for Fordham has one. Glazer again starting at right tackle today. No Will Conley. Ryan Joyce, who had been placing Glazer in a right guard, is not dressed today. So Giovanni Potente, a freshman from New Jersey, got the start at right guard. Another crossing pattern. This one is Coco Sulis, the stutter step. And Coco Sulis, that last little move, has a first down. And Lehigh appears to be leaving the middle of the field open here as we're under a minute. They're going to let Fordham chip away there over the middle and let that clock run down. They'll get a timeout here, though, to figure things out. It's the first called by Lehigh. So now each team has two remaining. It'll be first and 10 for Fordham at their own 42-yard line. It's that classic prevent defense. Keep the, the players in front of you, let them catch it, make the tackle. But there's still a lot of time here for Fordham. I mean, they can do that a few more times, get those catches over the middle. Clock stops on the first down briefly, and at least get into field goal range. And as far as field goal range goes for Andrew Mevis, they probably trust him as far as about, you know, 46 to 48 yards. He hit from 46 last week, missed from 47 in the win over Georgetown. And that one field goal today from 37, 38, looked like it would have been good from around 45, 46. After the Lehigh timeout, 50 seconds to go. Demoran again over the middle, time and space. A catch for Davis out of the backfield, another first down. Same thing for Fordham, finding the receiver in the middle of the field, picking up a chunk. And a quick reset. Pressure up the middle. Demora got away for it for a second, but that's going to be it. Flag in behind this as well. Wetzel and Ripka bring Demora down, and it's a hold against Fordham. Yeah, and that's a play where if you're Demora, you know the clock's ticking. You know you're under a minute. You gotta get. You just got to get rid of that one. Throw it out of bounds. Don't take the loss and stop the clock. Rams use their second timeout. Giovanni Patente call for the hold, and Lehigh de de decides to decline it to give Fordham to second down as opposed to first and 20. They'll take second and 10 here, still out of field goal range. 32 and seconds on the clock and one timeout left for Fordham now. And if you're Demorat, you're, it's a sophomore quarterback. You know, those are the things that you're going to learn, that when you're driving here, final minute of a half of a game, and you're in a position where you feel any kind of pressure, just get rid of the football. And get rid of it safely. He tried yes. to get rid of it in the first quarter <laughs> and threw one right to a Lehigh linebacker that was almost a pick six. Gave the Mountain Hawks the short field and eventually their first touchdown of the day. It is second and 16 after the sack. Three down linemen for Lehigh with Hafner. Looking to come straight ahead. He drops back as Demorat drops back. Slings one to his right. A nice catch by MJ Wright. He's to the 41-yard line. 23 seconds to go. Fordham had to use their last timeout. So now you're in a tricky position with the inability to stop the clock. If you do want to attempt a field goal, you're going to have to have enough time to spike the football after a, a game here. Although they can't spike it unless they get 
eight plus for a first down. Right. The ball at the 41 yard line of Lehigh. They probably need a good 10 yards here to be comfortably in Andrew Mevis's range. So that 10 yards also would give you a new set of downs and that momentary clock stoppage. But 10 yards, a long way to go. Lehigh has been aggressive, especially over their last two games defensively, relentless attacking of the quarterback. We'll see how they play this one here on third and eight. Again, they show blitz Wetzel, Hafner. Wetzel comes. Demorat out of the backfield. Davis brought down from behind. Where are they going to mark it? It's a first down. The clock is stopped on 17 seconds. Everybody's ready except the football. <laughs> Good job by the Fordham offense getting to the line, setting up. They're really not going to lose any time here. There's the spike. 13 seconds on the clock. No more timeouts. The Lehigh coaching staff on the far sideline still debating that last spot and the clock management by the officials. So what do you do here? Do you throw it once to the end zone before trying to get a field goal? Do you risk trying to pick up a chunk of yardage and being able to stop the clock one more time? That seems risky at 13 seconds. Yeah, I think you've got to throw to a sideline yep. and that's it. It would be a 50 yard kick at the moment for Mevis. Demorat in the field of play. Ferraro the catch and then Lehigh smart. Here comes the Fordham field goal unit hustling three, two, one, it's not gonna work. And that was the one thing you really couldn't do, is find a receiver short of the first down in the field of play, and the clock doesn't even stop temporarily, and no chance for the field goal unit. Joe Conlon ripped off his headset, not happy about the execution of that sequence. Rams tried to sneak in three, but they couldn't get it done, so Lehigh can run off happy with a late defensive stand and a four point lead here in the Bronx on the Patriot League Network. Welcome back to Jack Coffee Field. Halftime winding down between Fordham and Lehigh. Tim McMaster, Andrew Bogus, our entire crew with you here from atop Jack Coffee Field. Lehigh with this 14 10 lead at the break. You saw first half stats a moment ago. Here's a follow-up on that in particular. How about that penalty line, Tim? Five penalties for Fordham. We saw them on one play get two 15-yarders. And then for Lehigh, a big fat zero when it comes to yellow flags. And the penalties came in chunks, right, for Fordham. There was the two 15s on a play, and then there was another drive where it was back-to-back -back penalties as they were trying to get going there at the end of the half. So it wasn't like consistent penalties throughout, but they definitely were drive stumpers. The other thing that's interesting is just a difference in how these offenses do things, right? Fordham getting it done on the ground today. Lehigh through the air, although a lot of short passes early on for Lehigh. But as we are right now, really either team with a good second half here can pull out this football game. No surprise, by the way, that Lehigh has behaved itself in that first half. They came into today the second fewest penalty yards per game, the third fewest penalties per game. Princeton leads the nation in both of those categories. So a lot of discipline from Dan Gilmore's team. And they've showed it through the first half and that's part of the reason why they have this lead at 14-10 as we near the beginning of the third quarter here between these two schools in the Bronx. The day began with these two and Holy Cross at 1-0 atop the Patriot League. Bucknell 1-1. One Lafayette is finally playing its first league game today. They're at Georgetown, whom Fordham beat a week ago. And then way down the bottom of the table, Colgate, 0-2 in the Patriot League, 0-6 overall. And those two losses at home to Bucknell last week and the week before that to these Mountain Hawks. Fordham won the opening kickoff, deferred. So Fotis Coco Sulis will go back to our right to return the opening kick of the second half. Dylan Van Dusen does the kickoff duties for Lehigh. So he's got this one teed up. And the third quarter is underway here in the Bronx. 
It'll beat Coco Sulis from his nine with speed. Takes one hit, and then the second one brings him down at the 30-yard line. So out comes this Fordham offense that did its most damage on the ground behind Zach Davis, who is already well past what Lehigh normally gives up on the ground per game. And for Davis, his fifth 100-yard game of the season. Their quarterback, Tim DeMore, at one point was one for four, so at least that stat line has rallied. But the one interception looms large. It led to Lehigh's first touchdown today. And Davis, it'll be interesting to watch the carries. 19 of them in the first half. How many carries are they comfortable giving to the workhorse? They fake it to him on first down, then shovel it to him, and Davis drops it off his right knee. Riley O'Neill was coming around the end there, rushed him more out a little bit, made him get rid of that quickly before Joe I think Davis was comfortable with it. Joe Conlon's been complimentary of Zach Davis, uh, actually said with a chuckle, but also serious. He couldn't catch a pass in the spring, and now they trust his hands, but that time unable to bring that one in, so it's second and 10. It's a run. Davis stays on his feet, reversing field with room. Finally yanked down across the 40-yard line, but that should have been a loss. Instead, it's a first down. I don't know how he stayed on his feet. This is kind of the old Barry Sanders type play, right? Two guys hit him, but they almost knocked each other off, and he's able to keep his feet, go the other way, and plenty of green down the left sideline. Eric Slater, 44, is who got him in the backfield, couldn't bring him down. Then Sam McCloskey, a 50-year safa, a 50-year safety, made the tackle. Demorat break the end zone Fordham back on top and they've been successful pretty much every time Demorat has made the choice to keep the football they've gotten positive gains but nothing like that everybody went with the running back and Demorat wide open up the gut immediate points just 48 seconds into the third quarter you see, the, the key was uh, Sibilis, Makari Sibilis bit on the fake. He was the guy that was supposed to handle the quarterback on the keep. He went with the running back, and then from there, nobody could catch Demora showing off the speed. The extra point from Mevis is through, and Fordham has its second lead of the afternoon, 10-7. And now 17-14 on the long touchdown run by their quarterback. Fordham quarterback Tim DeMora played one of his best games as a freshman last year at Lehigh. Today with the Mountain Hawks in the Bronx, he shows off the legs 58 yards. And we saw Sibilis get fooled on the handoff, but then a great job downfield blocking from the Fordham receivers too. Able to hold their blocks on the secondary, and that allowed that to go from just a 10, 15 yard gain to the big game breaking touchdown for tomorrow. And again, that comes against a run defense that was giving up almost nothing on the ground. 74 yards per game that led the Patriot League. It was fourth in FCS. More at over 150 all purpose now, 90 through the air, 64 on the ground. We talked about Kyler Murray earlier. It's like <laughs> Kyler Murray numbers for Tim DeMorat. This is a Lehigh defense that allowed nine and 16 rushing yards over the last two weeks. Now that takes out the yardage you lose to sacks, which I still understand why college counts it that way. The right. NFL doesn't anymore. So just pure rushing yards, only 25 total over the previous two games allowed by Lehigh. Today, Davis over 100 and a 58 yard scoring run from the quarterback. Another flag against Fordham. A personal foul during the return gives Lehigh an extra 15 yards. Joe Conlon can't be happy. That's the third personal foul on this Fordham team. Plus, you had the mental error at the end of the half where they were unable to score points. He's got plenty to talk to these guys about, win or lose, come early this week. Last time we saw the Lehigh offense, they were going down the field for a touchdown. Monaco off the play fake. It's Bibbins again, losing Hilton. 
into Fordham territory for a first down. Lehigh quick to the line. This time it's a run. It's Rashawn Allen stood up, but refusing to go down near the 45 yards line. And nothing's been easy on the ground for Lehigh. It's been a lot of that kind of run. Grind it out, carry some defenders with you. Three yards and a cloud of dust. And exactly on cue, they get three yards there. So it gives them 34, 34 as a team early in this third quarter. Just three down linemen in this look defensively for Fordham. Linebackers blitzing. Monaco gets away and falls forward. The ball came out. But he was already down. And Monaco falling kind of awkwardly on that play, lunging forward. And he comes up slowly, checking out his hand. Fordham players all scrambling after the football, but for not. They're gonna look at this again. That replay, that might have been punched out before he was down. At least it's close enough to take a look at it. Second time that will go under the hood. First time a Lehigh touchdown was upheld by review. And now Nate Black and Carlton Derrick will get together on this one. Here's another look. It's Imperati. Yeah, and it actually looks ball. out. Yeah, it's out. Now the problem is whistles were blowing here this entire time. Right. And they're going to blow again here as multiple Fordham players go and pick it up. So they say it stands, it's third down. That's twice they've gone under the hood there and we've kind of come away from both plays a little perplexed here in the booth. But I guess it was hard to tell definitively. I don't know, I thought that one was out. Yeah. I could see why the Dambaugh catch maybe stood up to replay. That seemed to get punched out before Monaco was down on our two looks. Monaco throwing under pressure, missing his mark. And that brings up fourth down. And it looks like the Lehigh offense, nope, they're gonna come off the field. Monaco is backing up as if he was hearing a play and heading towards the huddle, but now the punting unit comes on the field. It would have been a fourth and four from the Fordham 32 yard line, or 42 yard line, excuse me. So good job by Fordham after the disappointment of not getting the fumble, able to stop them on third down and at least get the ball back. Snap back to Austin Henning. Fair catch made by a charging Coco Sillis. So a touchdown on the defensive stop for Fordham. They've got the football and they've got the lead here in the third quarter on the Patriot League Network. Back here at Jack Coffey Field alongside Tim McMaster. I'm Andrew Bogish. Early third quarter between Fordham and Lehigh. It's the Rams' turn to be on top right now. They've led 10-7, they've trailed 7-0, and then 14-10, that was our halftime score. Tim DeMorat just ran one in from 58 yards out, the Fordham QB. And now whistles at the snap. And another false start, another penalty coming against this Fordham team. It's on Nick Zakel, their left tackle. And Joe Conlon, the head coach, who's also the O-line coach this year, just kind of threw his arms in the air. That's three false starts on his offensive line. There's been a hold in there as well. All the penalties on the offense except for the one on the special teams. And there's another flag. Start. Offense. Number 71. 
This time it's the center, Phil Sala. Shaking his head over the football. False start on the center. Not something you see a lot. Ford was now in a sequence in this game where they took two personal fouls on the same play. And now, back-to-back -back false starts before a snap. And now Davis gets pushed back into the end zone. They'll mark his forward progress done at the two. But it goes from bad to worse for Fordham. Now you're just trying to avoid something catastrophic. This is a lot like when they had the back-to-back -back with the two 15-yarders on the one play. It's just second and over 20 here, 25 yards. Not sure who that was pushing Giovanni Patenti all the way into the backfield. That's what stopped that run out wide right by Davis. It is second and 24 for Fordham. It's a run, and it's Davis right into Wetzel and then turned around, but he got out to about the seven yard line, so incremental breathing room for Fordham. Try to pick up some yardage for your punter at this point. Maybe you break one here. I mean, they've, they've shown the ability to break some runs. Do you trust your offensive line slash your sophomore quarterback to throw right now? I don't think so, not on this long, not on third and 21, because what are the chances of you completing that kind of play anyway? Think you play it safe with the lead here. They're gonna throw. Davis blocks Hafner. Coco Sulis can't make a juggling catch. The ball was behind him. Plus the good coverage by Safeman. Yeah, nice coverage defensively by Lehigh. If he had made the catch, it would have been a, a minimal gain for Fordham. They'll send out the punting team. A little behind with the throw again with Demora. We saw that early in the game. He was behind a lot of his receivers. Then he seemed to find a groove late in the first half. Andrew Mevis has to stand in his own end zone. Gets the right foot to it. And a good kick. Backing up is Jalen Floyd, the fair catch. They'll put it at the 44 yard line. So here come the Mountain Hawks back on offense, playing from behind still in this third quarter. Great kick though by Mevis. That's all you can ask for from your punter. The, the hang time he got on that and distance, he at least gives his defense some room here. Mevis, just a junior from Indiana, continues to creep his way up a lot of the different punting lists in school history. Last year, set one record you don't want to set, the most punts in a season, but he also set the single season school mark for his average. Practice makes perfect, right? Tyler Monica, a little shovel in front for Bibbins. Trying to get outside. He'll get to the 50. It looked like there was a Lehigh player with a handful of a Fordham jersey, but no flag. You can hear the fans below us yelling for the hold. Smart play by Lehigh here. They're having no luck with the typical runs up the middle or around end. So get your receiver involved as far as the running game goes. And a nice pickup on first down. A play fake. Monaco had a man wide open over the middle. Did he catch it? He didn't. He threw it behind Puerto Real. If he hit him in stride, that's a big gain. And Puerto Real has been the guy that, that came in leading this team in receptions, but has been so quiet today for this Lehigh team. That time Fordham able to let him get wide open over the middle. And Monica misses it. Quickly to third and five. Four wide receivers for Lehigh. Pressure up the middle. Monaco in the flat. A catch and a hit immediately by Peter Lucas. Driven out of bounds by Dervin Hilton. It's going to be fourth and two. Dan Gilmore is looking down the line of scrimmage from the far sideline, thinking about what to do here. And they're going to go for it. He punted in a similar position their last time out. But now they're going to gamble. Interesting here to see what they do here because they really haven't had luck with short gains on the run. And now Coach Gilmore is going to call for time. It's fourth and one. 
They're at the 47 of Fordham, have to get to the 46. And they'll use a timeout here to make sure of what they want to do. And I don't know about you, Tim, but you know what? I trust my defense here. Let me see what my offense can do. It's fourth and one. We should be able to get that. And if we can't, we'll respond defensively. So I like the aggression. Yeah, especially the way this game has gone. I, I, I think it's the right thing to go for it. I'm just really interested to see what play they have called here, whether they go with something a little sneaky, whether they just try to get that one yard, which has been tough against this Fordham defense, or some sort of play action, or they change their mind altogether and they'll go with the punt team. The punting unit Although comes- watch for the fake, right? Comes sprinting out. Fordham is prepared for that. At least prepared to get Coco Sulis back to return. No fake, high kick. Coco Sulis has it, backpedaling at the 10 yard line. So they change their mind in the timeout. They punt and put their defense back on the field. It's Fordham by three in the third on the Patriot League Network. So Lehigh backs away from going forward on fourth and one just across midfield. They punt and instead give Fordham a long field to work with. The Rams from their own 11, their last drive started in a similar spot and Fordham took back-to-back -back false starts before snapping the ball once successfully. Just avoided a safety, punted out of their own end zone. Now, Trey Sneed starts this drive at a running back next to Tim Demorak. Keith Wetzel for Lehigh. Demorat firing, hoping for Coco Sulis. It's a diving catch at the 40 yard line. And Coco Sulis was wide open out there, but Demorat's throw way off the mark, but a good job by Coco Sulis to adjust, really change direction completely and make the move. Rams get to the line quickly, give it to Sneed. Stutter step into space, into Lehigh territory. And that was a little bit extra from Sneed, right? We talked about him in the first half being that guy that gets you those tough yards and can push forward for a few and showed a little juke move there, gets to the outside. And the benefit of having three running backs that they trust, Rams can give extended breaks to each one of them. Nowhere to go this time for Sneed. Slater had him by the legs, Ripka up high, 44 and 52 in white. So already mission accomplished on this drive. Starting from the 10, they've moved the ball out, they've won the field possession, game back. Now you try to get into scoring position. Tim DeMorant's 58 yard touchdown run, the only point still in this third quarter. The sophomore QB, under duress, he gets back to the line of scrimmage just barely. Jawan Morrow going low, number 40, to get Demorat down. And there was a there was an opening there for a second, but Demorat not able to quite get through it. And now a big third and ten, both for the Fordham offense and the Lehigh defense. Pressure, Demorat lost the football. Fordham has it back, it's fourth down. And they missed the block on Siblis coming off the edge and nobody picked him up, able to get right through to Demorat for the sack. See Sneed kind of looked at him but didn't, didn't get over in time. Sibylis able to get in easily. Looks like they gave Snead a choice. There are two guys coming off the edge who you're gonna block. He didn't pick Sibylis, and he very nearly got a turnover for his team. Mevis gets it up in the air. Bouncing at the 15, and down a few yards away from that. So now we've treated a handful of punts. Midway through the third quarter, Fordham continues to lead here. 17 14. And you're right, Tim. At the very least, they flip the field there and get away from their own end zone. But 
There was some, ment some momentum, yeah. the long pass to, to Coco Sulis, and the run by Sneed, that disappeared in a second. It was interesting that we didn't see Davis at all on that drive, as, as much as he got the ball in the first half. It was almost like they just said, all right, Sneed, this is your possession. And you mentioned it, the ability to do that when you have confidence in your running backs. Lehigh's hoping to build towards that. They've got three guys that they like right now in Allen, Hope, and Hill, but it's a sophomore and two freshmen still getting their footing in the college game. This is Hope looking for a hole, puts his head down across the 15-yard line. Another play where it just took a long time to develop on the handoff for Lehigh. Four wide receivers on second and eight here for Lehigh. Monaco looking to his left and going deep on his left and he overthrows Bibbins. He had Hilton beat, but they can't connect. And it's that battle again, Bibbins and Hilton and look like that time Hilton slipped a little bit, lost his footing and Bibbins had the clear step but unable to make the play. Hilton's got a pick. He dropped what could have been a pick six very early in this game, but Bibbins has a touchdown catch against him, and he beat him here fair and square. Just couldn't run down the pass. Third and long, we'll see if Fordham brings pressure. Up the middle, mm -hmm. Imperati was coming, and Monaco throws it over everybody's head. Yeah, they ran the stunt there, Imperati coming around the end through the gap. Untouched, good call by the Fordham defense, and they force another punt. It's a three and out for Lehigh. It's a very slow, methodical, choppy third quarter right now. The second quarter was a sprint, but now with both teams playing defense, we are racking up the punts in this third quarter. A little pressure on Henning, took a bump as well. And that one's out on the far sideline. You know, the Rams will start right at midfield. They have scored in this quarter to take the lead, but haven't done much with the football since then. As Joe Conlon walks the sideline down below us, looking to put wins together, a nice road win for Fordham, scoring in the final seconds on a fourth down throw from DeMorat to Coco Sulis to get one by the Hoyas. After their last win here against Richmond, they got roughed up the next week on the road against Yale, so they certainly wanted to back up the Georgetown win better than that one. Zach Davis, who was not out for the last series, runs into a brick wall there and eventually tumbles over with multiple Mountain Hawks in his face. Yeah, the defense is really coming to life here in this third quarter. Davis ran for 50 more yards in the first half that Lehigh normally gives up for an entire game. Here comes the pressure again. DeMorat felt it, gets himself back to the line of scrimmage. Backside pressure there, almost got to him. Yeah, and a good job by DeMorat to, to kind of realize it and feel that pressure in time to roll out and, and at least get back to that line of scrimmage. Jason Dueling, number 99, in hot pursuit of DeMorat. Wetzel made sure DeMora went out of bounds on that far sideline. Now third and 10 for Fordham. They'll go four receivers. DeMora's running. Wetzel brings him down, it's fourth down. And he had a, it looked like he had an opening for a second, but you see how good Wetzel is and how quick he can react. Uh, maybe it was a step behind off the snap, but quickly made up for it, makes the play and that's why he's the leader of this Lehigh defense. He kind of got caught behind the line, but able to get out from behind them and track down DeMorat. 89 tackles in each of the last two years for Wetzel, led Lehigh both of those years. 57 tackles coming into today. 
Mevis way up into the air with this punt. Puerto Real makes the catch just inside the 10. Another punt, another good defensive possession, and now Lehigh's offense takes its latest turn here in the third quarter. And Fordham plays so many games, Tim, a lot of them in the Patriot League where they've got arguably the two best linebackers in the game in Glenn Cunningham and Ryan Greenhagen, but you throw Wetzel and Hafner four really yeah. good second level defenders. Yeah, if you want to see good linebacker play, this is certainly one. And, and you mentioned Cunningham and Greenhagen. They, they've been on display for sure. That's them, 26 and 47, stacked behind the defensive line for Fordham. They drop into coverage on first down. Monaco going down the seam. Cunningham and Snyder, and Snyder holds on. They each got a touch on that before the tight end pulled it in. What a day for Snyder today. That's his fourth catch, and that throw was perfect. Just far enough outside the defender. Snyder able to basically catch this one three times as he juggles it while running down the field. But nice job by Monaco just laying it out there. Monaco stumbling his way forward for a couple, escaping a broken play in the backfield. Because it was great coverage on the tight end, right on him, but that throw perfect. And Snyder continues to have a marvelous afternoon. A couple of big catches for number 87. He showed off his speed late in the second quarter, almost running one in for six. He's off the field for this second and eight. Monaco pulls it out, Puerto Real over the middle. Tony Atoya brings him down right away, but Lehigh's moving, a first down to the 26. And the zone coverage, and he had the three, sec the three defensive backs for Lehigh, but able to get the ball out in front of the three of them. And a nice completion for Lehigh, who's pressing all the right buttons on this drive. And Tyler Monaco remains impressive. 15 to 23 now, 219. Two touchdowns and a pick. He has shown strength and finesse with that right arm. He's throwing again. If he can get away from pressure and he can't. Carter's there. Imperati was there as well. As well as Coste, who left the game with an injury in the first half. But back out there right now for Fordham. Yeah, and Cunningham maybe was the first guy through to get Monaco to kind of shift his position, and then teammates came in and, and made the finish. They lose nine on that one. Dambaugh the catch, spun through a tackle and reaching back to the original starting point here. They get the nine back from the sack, it's third and 10. Late third quarter, Lehigh trailing by three. Here at Fordham, both these teams 1-0 in the Patriot League. Tyler Monaco tripped up as he tried to escape. Diodato brought him down. And Fordham bringing pressure again. That time it was Greenhagen blitzing from his linebacker position. He didn't get there, but the defensive line able to stand tall. No gain on the play. This will be a 45-yard field goal from Austin Henning. It would be a season long. It's his first attempt of the day. He's four for seven for the season. Good snap, good hold. The kick is away. Does it have the distance? It does. A season long 45-yarder from Austin Henning. Knots us at 17 late in the third quarter. Good drive there by Lehigh. Both these defenses had really stepped up, but that drive Lehigh, even, even the 
able to get it going with the passing play. Obviously, the big strike to Snyder over the middle. But overall, good job getting the ball upfield. They tie this game up at 17. It's going to be a heck of a fourth quarter here in the Bronx. Seven points in the first minute of this quarter for Fordham on the DeMorant 58-yard run. And now points in the final minute for Leha, the 45-yarder from Henning. And now Dylan Van Dusen, a freshman from Radnor, Pennsylvania, will kick it away. Coco Sulis and Dan Burns are back to return for Fordham. They kick towards Coco Sulis from his 10. Coco Sulis is across the 30 to bring his Fordham offense back onto the field. And there's a push or a shove or two there. This has been a, a chippy, trash-talking game. It's a conference game. Yep. Both these teams coming off wins with confidence. First and 10 for the Rams at the 30. Now Fordham's turn to try to answer. And they go back to Trey Sneed running the football. We've seen more of him than Zach Davis in this third quarter. There goes Sneed, wide right, and he dives forward. They'll mark him down at the 33-yard line. And that's going to do it for the third quarter here in the Bronx. The last Trey Sneed run sends us to the fourth quarter with nothing settled. Lehigh 17, Fordham 17. Those final 15 minutes are next on the Patriot League Network. So both teams with experiences to kind of draw upon in a tight game here this afternoon. Trey Sneed on a second effort to cross the 40-yard line. And that's good enough for a Fordham first down to open the fourth quarter. Sneed continues to be the guy here in the second half for Fordham. It's almost like that was the plan, was use Davis in the first half to get things going and then bring in Sneed to pound things out here late. Flanker screen for Coco Sulis. Lehigh was out there with him. Somehow he finds the sideline. Still going inside the 30 and finally pushed out by Wetzel. I don't know how he made the corner there. It looked like they had him strung out to the sideline. He gets to the sideline and somehow just Bangs a left turn and goes up the sideline. Between the number of defenders and his proximity to the sideline, I don't know how he escaped all of that. Then he cuts back and makes a couple more defenders miss. Sneed trying to get outside himself and can't do it. Jalen Floyd, the last Mountain Hawk to him and got him down. Thirty-two yards, by the way, on the catch and run by Coco Sulis. Through three quarters, the rushing attack for Fordham, 244 yards. Against a team giving up just 74 rush yards per game coming into today. The screen to the other side, and this time Lehigh is there, and no escape for Coco Sulis. Third and nine for the Rams. Borderline field goal range here. Oh, Zakel rocked again. The left tackle, his third false start of the afternoon. And that's a killer because now you're probably outside field goal range, so you gotta. Got to get a positive gain here on third. Zakela Jr., second team all Patriot League last year, started every game in left tackle, every game there this year. And that time, just kind of sat back in his stance.
Demora had time on third down. That time disappears. The penalty, the sack, and now they're definitely at a field goal range. Yeah, they go from what could have been a 42, 43 yard field goal to a 48 yarder on the penalty, and now, now you're in punting range. Coverage down the field by Lehigh. Let that pocket collapse around Demoret. And no shocker, Wetzel had his hand on the Fordham quarterback. Slater as well at the bottom of that pile, number 44 for the Mountain Hawks. Another Mevis punt over the head of Puerto Real and a good Lehigh bounce. Fordham had multiple players downfield to take the carom towards the goal line, but it checked back upfield. So the Mountain Hawks begin from their own 16 yard line. In a tie game, just a little more than three minutes gone by here in the fourth quarter. A timeout on the field, we'll take it with him on the Patriot League Network. It's a long field to work with. As you can see, they start from their own 16-yard line. Another play fake and a throw over Bibbins' head. And again, it's Bibbins versus Hilton. That time, the quarterback was nowhere near his receiver. Yeah, and Hilton was great coverage that time by Hilton. He won that little battle of those two guys and a lot of hand checking in that matchup. Both guys, it seems like every play. There are the numbers for Tyler Monaco. Two games ago he was benched, responded with a big road win against Colgate. And now this strong afternoon has to throw that one away. Imperati ran him over for Fordham. And just like that, it's third and 10. Yeah, Imperati's been coming off that edge all day long. That time, attacked on the quarterback. Nate Hope comes in at running back for Lehigh. They like him as a receiver. As you see that pocket, there was nowhere to go for Monaco. And Allen hadn't even turned around yet, coming out of the backfield to look for the ball. On third down, they pick up a blitz, but Snyder, who's had a big afternoon, just drops one. And Spillers was right there to make the play. If Snyder does make that catch, not going to pick up enough yardage for the first down. Spillers right there to apply the hit. Austin Henning to punt. He's had a couple of Rams fly by him. Not on this attempt, but it's not a good kick. Favorable bounce gets it across midfield and even farther than that. That's about 20 plus yards a kick it'll, off a shank from Henning. It'll look like a good kick in the box score. Still early here in the fourth quarter. The Fordham offense back on the field after this on the Patriot League Network. We're back here in the Bronx. Andrew Bogish and Tim McMaster with you. Fordham and Lehigh in a good one. Todd at 17. Two of the three teams who began today 1-0 in Patriot League play. Holy Cross being the other. Good field position here for the Rams. Try to put together a drive, retake that lead. Zach Davis, limited carries in the third quarter, gets one here early in the fourth, and got clipped in the backfield, stumbled his way back to the line of scrimmage. It almost was like the amount we saw Trey Snead in the third quarter, Tim, like they were keeping Davis fresh for this fourth quarter. Well, and here's his chance to get it going and get this offense going. The way these two teams have played this season, it almost feels like this is gonna go down to the last couple minutes, right? With Davis back in the game, he's now facing a Lehigh rush defense that was better in the third quarter than it was in the first two. And now they get to Demorad and sling him down. Dean Colton. 
wrapped him up. They've made a living in the backfield defensively the last couple of games. 13 sacks over their last two, and now a big one by Colton with the exclamation point as well. Third and 17 in a hurry. Defenses continue to dominate this second half. Davis gets back just a couple across the 40 for Fordham, but they're punting again. They'll send the punt unit out again, and Mevis will try to do what he's done consistently through this second half, and that is pin the Lehigh offense inside their own 20-yard line. It'll, need, it'll take a good kick this time to do that. We've only had one drive in the second half, last more than five plays. Good kick by Mevis. Floyd missed it. Falls back on top of it under pressure from Naeem Mayfield. Dodging danger in a big way, Jalen Floyd. Yeah, Floyd back on the 10 yard line, waves for the fair catch, but really had to sprint over the left to get to that ball. And then all kinds of trouble. It was spiraling at him, which is sometimes a little trickier to, to catch. After the recovery, his team starts from its own six yard line. Bibbins goes in motion. Hilton hands him off to James Biggs Frazier defensively for Fordham. Monaco goes that way and throws with Greenhagen on his back in the end zone. This game could end up coming down to, who knows, one big turnover, right? We, have, we haven't seen that in the second half. We saw the two, the turnover for each team in the first half. They were big plays. But so far in the second half, haven't seen something big like that. If Fordham's able to force something, now that they've kind of consistently had this field goal possession, position one. Almost had it on that punt. Bunch formation to the left of the quarterback. Zathan Hill gets a carry and gets space. Zathan Hill across the 20, now the 30. Greenhagen trying to catch him, but he won't do it. Zathan Hill, 94 yards, touchdown, Lehigh. And the big fella gets through the line and Fordham a couple of hand tackle attempts, but no chance on bringing down Hill with a hand tackle and he just sheds those and then turns on the speed once he gets to the corner. Anthony Tony Atoya had the best chance to bring him down. Look at the Lehigh sideline running with the freshman from North Carolina. It's 94 yards. It's a tie-breaking touchdown. And now Austin Henning out for the PAT. Henning puts it through for a full seven-point edge. Zathan Hill scored the game-winning touchdown last week. That was only from nine yards out. This one puts his team ahead 94 yards later as we step aside on the Patriot League Network. 20, and getting that short field, couldn't do anything with it offensively. And then on that one play, Lehigh, Lehigh flips the script. Another return for Coco Sulis. Flipped at the 25-yard line. The only bad thing for Lehigh, and I use the word bad very loosely in this scenario, is that the touchdown happened so fast, there's still nine minutes of game time to protect this seven-point lead. And that defense right back on the field this time. A lot more space to work with for that Lehigh defense as Fordham will start at the 25. And that running attack for Fordham, while we see Lehigh break it like that, Fordham's running attack has run into some issues here in the second half. Yeah, the Lehigh defense since halftime has looked like the one that really ground Merrimack and Colgate into the ground as Davis to the still on his feet as he shoved out of bounds far sideline. Just what I was saying, right? <laughs> Both teams playing a lot of defense. You get Hill's touchdown run, and now Davis finding getting yards after the, that initial contact that time able to spin out of yet another tackle 
First and 10, obviously, for Fordham. It's Davis again looking for that hole, driving to midfield. He said it at halftime in that first half, and you can't imagine they would want to give it to him, you know, 40 times in a game. So at some point, the carries had to slow down, and they did. They gave it to Snead a lot in that third quarter, but now it's back to a healthy dose of First down with that run. It'll be his 28th carry of the afternoon. Another career high set today for Zach Davis. He's done that now multiple times this year, running right, jumping over a defender to the 40-yard line. Another big gain on first down, and that sets things up for this offense. It just makes DeMorat so much more effective on second and five or four as opposed to long yard. After that run, Sneed behind DeMorat. Trey Sneed is free to the end zone. And Fordham gets back to what they did in the first half, which is just run, run, run the football. First it's Davis, three in a row, and then they go to Snead and that entire drive on the ground for Fordham to get back in it. So much defense through the third quarter. Quick possessions, three and outs, backing up, punting, 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 and now Zaith and Hill over 90 yards, and then Davis and Sneed combine to get Fordham right back in the end zone less than two minutes later. Mavis's extra point drilled through to tie us up again at 24. The Lehigh lead didn't even last two minutes thanks to Trey Sneed. He's got 91 yards with 92, a touchdown each, plus DeMorat's 50. Again, it's just worth repeating against a team that was not yeah. giving up anything on the ground. And now today they're having a tough time doing anything over to stop Fordham. Yeah, over 300 yards. And they really haven't thrown it that much today, Fordham, because they haven't had to. They started running the ball early in the first quarter. And other than a little bit in the third there, Lehigh really hasn't been able to stop it consistently. And now they're getting big chunks here in the fourth. And Wow, seven and a half minutes to go, tied up. It's going to be a great finish. Fordham's been waiting for a breakout game from Trey Sneed as well. He's been good, but he has not had a game like this before. And this is his first year in the Bronx. A Rutgers transfer with a three-star recruit at a high school down in Florida. And he got on the field, not a lot, but he was playing over a couple of seasons with the Scarlet. Is that Division I pedigree with him? And he has run the ball really well here this afternoon in conjunction with Zach Davis. Jalen Floyd will come out of his own end zone. It's a rarity these days with a starting spot, the 25, and the tackle. Floyd shy that 25 yard line. Which is exactly why so many teams now, once you step across that goal line, they don't even bother coming out. Yep. Because the 25 yard line is a good start, a good place to start at. And it's the second time today we've seen Lehigh do that. The opening kickoff of the game, they took it in the end zone. And uh, they even had the, the other return man holding them up. Yes. They ran through the sign, so to speak, and just got to the 25 that time. I'm still not even used to guys calling fair catches now on kickoffs, yeah. which takes you out to the 25 yard line. It's a pseudo touchback. Lehigh's last possession was a quick one because of Zathan Hill's 94-yard run for the first time today, right? This is a Lehigh yeah, penalty. First time. Not a great time to take it. So it'll be first and 15. Now Lehigh backs inside their own 20. Monaco rolling, throwing right, and Bibbins makes the catch, then gets run over 
by Tony Atoya. Atoya had him lined up well in advance, just waiting for him to come up and, and make the play. The sure-handed tackle carries him out of bounds. Second and long for Lehigh. Getting loud here in the Bronx. Second and 17 for Lehigh. Monaco flush to his right. Going deep down the field looking for Snyder and he can't bring it in. Two drops on the last two throws to him after a huge first half today. And Spillers was down there in coverage and looked like he had good coverage but right at the end a little bit of contact between the two guys and there was some space to thread that ball in there. Couldn't quite bring it in. So now it's third and 14. Nice job by Monaco to get himself time to make this throw and he put it on the money. Snyder just couldn't bring it in. Crossing pattern, Bibbins, Spillers brings him down. Nice job by Spillers again. He's been very good in coverage today. Fordham allowing the underneath route on the third tackle. Spillers, a freshman out of the Dallas area, has taken that third linebacking spot away from Jaden Vasquez, kind of a pseudo defensive back. We see him back in coverage a lot, had a big interception when Fordham beat Richmond in their last home game in late September, and that time in the field, receiver Bibbins. Coco Sulis, fair catch at his own 34-yard line. You see the time remaining. Three timeouts for Fordham, two for Lehigh, and a 24-all game. Both of these teams coming off dramatic road wins two weeks ago for Lehigh at Colgate last Saturday. Fordham at Georgetown. Each team has led more than once this afternoon. Lehigh had the last lead after Zathan Hill's 94 yard touchdown run, but Fordham went right back down the field at a 40 yarder from Trey Sneed. Zach Davis running into multiple Mountain Hawks on first down. Yeah, and it looked like he almost lost his footing a little bit right after taking the handoff there and then once he didn't have a, a quick They give Davis a yard on that run. Movement again up front. Four, maybe five false starts yeah. on Fordham today. been a struggle for the offensive line and actually you could see the receivers showing some frustration play do it again but this is part of the attack from Lehigh aggressive they're coming forward from all three levels and it makes you flinch as yep. a lineman now nowhere to run and just like that it's third and long Send in a couple more receivers. Coco Pulsoulis comes back in. Is this the punt? Right, because you're at the 30, so you could try to get something going here. They are going to throw on third and 14, and DeMoran is swallowed up. It's Wetzel. And I was critical of DeMoran not getting rid of the ball earlier in the game. That was a tough spot. He, not a lot of time. Drops back. It's hit. By one of the best in the business in Keith Wetzel. And he's lost a couple of battles with blocking running backs. That time he just discarded Zach Davis and took Demorat down. 
Mevis gets it away, another beauty. Caught cleanly by Puerto Real. So now it's Lehigh's turn with 3.38 on the clock. They've got two timeouts left in a 24-24 game. Their kicker, Austin Henning, has already hit a season-long 45-yarder this afternoon, but that was going in the other direction. The goalpost to our left here at Jack Coffey Field, the more open end of the stadium. In fact, that's the one of the edges of campus. You've got just streets and the botanical gardens behind Fordham. As you can tell by the direction they're facing and the way they choose to line up, they want to go to the right for late game scenarios. It's a run, it's Hill, and it's Spillers taking him down right away. Parker Spillers made a nice open field tackle to end the last Lehigh drive. And now starts this one with one. He's been all over the second half as Spillers. We talked so much about the other linebackers on this unit with Greenhagen and Cunningham, but Spillers, big factor here in the second half. He ends up at the bottom of your screen, lined up against the tight end Snyder. Bibbins in motion for Lehigh followed by Dervin Hilton. That's been the one-on-one -on -one battle all day. Monaco's pass is tipped up in the air, and it falls incomplete. That might have gotten a helmet, actually, I think, of someone along the line. Yeah, and Biggs Frazier didn't see it initially. He was in a perfect spot if he had seen it off the tip to make an interception there. But by the time he realized it was up in the air, it was over his head. Well, that was a defender with his hand up. It caused the tip and the dangerous floater for Lehigh. Pressure up the middle, Monaco has to get it away. Bibbins, what a catch. We may have another review there. The Fordham coaching staff just waving it off saying there's no way he got a foot down, but it's ruled a catch initially here on the field. The Fordham sideline was pointing to the field judge, Scott Browder, who was down the field as if he was calling incomplete. And that's a flag on Monaco. He started to stumble towards the line of scrimmage, expecting a snap that didn't come. So that'll back him up five yards. With pressure, Imperati coming up the middle. Just flick that one away. And look at Bibbins. Yeah, I think he got the foot down before he kind of then he leaped. But then the ball came out, but I think he was down. That I think if they review that, it doesn't get overturned no not the the two calls that we thought might get overturned <laughs> did not get overturned right. today and i've given up i'm sure as you have <laughs> figuring out catches and going to the ground zathan hill dragged down by greenhagen just over two minutes left here in the bronx this one has been good a pair of one and no teams doing battle in the patriot league Two timeouts left for Lehigh, three for Fordham. It's second and 17 officially. Four wide receivers for Monaco. Quick to his left, Puerto Real the catch. Tony Itoya brings him down immediately. They get to the 40 for third and 11. Good pocket there. Uh, the offensive line for Lehigh. We haven't said a lot of that today, but they really gave Monaco a nice pocket to work from. But a short gain sets up this long third down. Third and 11. Monaco directing traffic. He sends Snyder off the line. Al Final minute, fourth quarter in the Bronx. Monaco goes down. He was trying to find free space, but couldn't. Coste was in on that play. And Coste, a guy that we saw helped off the field in the first half, back out there now healthy, and swings for the fences after that play down. And then we have a player down now on the far sideline. Far away from the play. 
as you see the sack and Coste getting up from it. And then hit that one to Yankee Stadium. One of the Fordham defensive backs is down off the field, far sideline, and in a lot of pain. Fordham called a timeout before noticing that to stop the clock to get it back with time to spare. Fifty-seven seconds reset on the game clock. And it is a charge timeout to Fordham, so they have two left, so does Lehigh. And it's Durbin it Hilton, Hilton yeah. who has been in a one-on-one -on -one battle all day with Devin Bibbins, who was injured. And he turned away the cart, turned away the help of a trainer. And he comes running, hopping, skipping to the near sideline. An interception, a near pick six in this one for Durbin Hilton. And Fordham would love for Hilton to not have to play again today. Get the ball back here, go down, score some points right at the end and win the game. And and let that be Hilton's last action. Henning in a big spot, good punt, and Coco Sulis a fair catch at his own six yard line. And Coco Sulis, you saw guarding his eyes a little bit like a, like a center fielder in baseball with the sun setting over our right side here. That's what Fordham's gonna be working into as they try to put together the winning points here under a minute to go. They've got two timeouts, so does Lehigh but they've got a long way to go even just to get in a field yeah. goal range for Andrew Mevis. It's Trey Sneed, not Austin Davis, in the backfield on first down. Sneed is running and he fights his way across the 10. Davis will come off the sideline for this next play, but the Rams seem to be only in half a rush right now in the final minute. Davis, can he get to the outside? Keeps his feet, gets the first down and stops the clock. Now we'll see, now that they get the first down and they're up to the 20, now we'll see if they try to get some chunks here and get into field goal range. It was tough, you think, with Kukosulis down there on that punt. You put your feet on the 10 yard line. If it's over your head, you let it go. And you that know, one was coming in kind of a line drive also. But with the sun in his eyes, I feel like he had a lot going on in his head. I always thought that that was a hard and fast rule for returners, but it, it seems to be less and less so these yeah. days. Fordham still running. Davis over a defender, the 25 yard line. And the Rams are content to play for overtime. Not even going to risk a mistake here in these final moments. And we are done with regulation in the Bronx. Lehigh 24, Fordham 24, with OT still to come on the Patriot League Network. Overtime begins with the all-important all important coin toss as we welcome you back here to the Bronx alongside Tim McMaster. I'm Andrew Bogish. We knew this one would be good and has been, Tim. We've traded leads, we've had big plays on both sides, some defensive stops on both sides as well, and here we are, 60 minutes and nothing decided. Yeah, both teams have had moments, right, momentum-wise, where it felt like they were about to take control of this game and then something would just go back the other way, whether it was a big play or early turnovers, and it's always been close throughout, and now it's a completely th different thing here in overtime, right? Both teams will get the ball, try to score, and we will see who will start with it here with the coin toss. The only, the only change to overtime procedure for this year in college football is when we get to, if you get to the fifth overtime, then you have to go for two. Otherwise, each possession starts from the 25 yard line. The referee is just about set to call the captains to midfield for the coin flip. The way both of these teams have been able to get pressure on the quarterback throughout, that's gonna be key here in overtime. You gotta get protection for these quarterbacks. One big sack can be the game basically in overtime, turning the ball over and, or just 
giving up a big loss on a push. And suddenly you lose in overtime. So protection up front, and if you're Fordham and you're that offensive line, no penalties in overtime. Nate Black giving instructions. That's Jesse Bramble, the injured Fordham captain. Looks like Lehigh won the toss. And McCloskey, Bramble points to the way that Fordham wants to defend. Choosing to put its defense on the field first here, Tim, after winning the toss. I know a lot of teams obviously would like to have the ball first. got to set the tone, but I kind of like knowing what I can do once my offense gets on the field. Absolutely, especially the way they've moved the ball today because it's been all running game. And if you can get a stop and hold Lehigh from scoring. Overtime starts with Austin Davis. Ankle tackle from Makari Siblis. And there's an injured Fordham offensive lineman at Giovanni Potente, who is an injury replacement for Ryan Joyce, who was an injury replacement for Will Conley. Right tackle, right guard has been in flux for Fordham the last couple of weeks. And Potente continues to be in a lot of pain Your QB comparison as overtime starts. Better raw numbers for sure from Tyler Monaco. Not pictured though as Tim Demora's 58 yard touchdown run in the opening minute of the third quarter. So since halftime, which I would still think has been almost, it feels more defense first for both these teams. We've had a 58 yard run by a quarterback, a 94 yard Lehigh touchdown run and then a 40-yarder by Fordham. But then not a lot in between, right? It was the, it's been the big plays instead of the extended drives that we saw more of in the first half. And this is going to be interesting for this Fordham offense because the way they've run the ball here and the way DeMorat has been a little prone to the bad time turnover, do you just keep running the ball and then try a field goal on fourth down if you don't get the first and then hope to play defense, or do you put the ball in the air? Second and 11, they lost a yard on that play. Anthony Marinelli has taken over at right guard for the injured Potente. DeMorat throwing to his left. Ferraro, a tough catch with two defenders flying by. Good throw by DeMorat. He kept it low. If that ball's up high, who knows with those two defenders both bearing down on Ferraro. But he keeps this ball perfectly low. Ferraro down, goes down, gets it. And now you have a manageable third down here. Ferraro and Coco Sulis to the top of your screen. El Zayat and MJ right to the bottom. That's where Demorat's looking. That's it. Reaching inside the 10 with a Fordham first down. So forget what I said about just running the ball, right? Straight to the air, back to back completions. And now a first and goal. Well, for a guy that's made some unforced errors today, some throws that have been off target, he's put drive that after of course that huge throw last week to Coco Sulis for the winner down at Georgetown it's first and goal from the nine overtime number one Demorat had it knocked down at the line he was looking for El Zayat on another kind of quick in route Pete Hafner there defensively for Lehigh left with his hands on his head in disbelief. Second and goal from the nine.
Demorat's got it. Needs a block to the outside. He got around Wetzel, but not McCloskey. He's down to the four, though, third and goal. For a moment there, it looked like he had the corner, but good job by the Lehigh linebacking core. Wetzel got him outside just enough. The teammate will able to come out. Ian runs in. Zach Davis runs off. In overtime in the Bronx, third and goal. They're throwing a fade. Contact out there against Gildia, the other tight end. Floyd, the defender, no flag, fourth down. Yeah, good job by Floyd there, really just holding his ground on that ball. The size difference. You can see why they went to the fade. Jeff Ciccio, excuse me, was the intended receiver. So now it's Mevis to put Fordham in front in overtime. Gets it away clean and gets it through. Three points for Fordham to start overtime. So now Lehigh knows what it needs. A field goal to extend the game. A touchdown wins it. The Mountain Hawks won the coin toss to start overtime. Chose to play defense first. Now out comes their offense. Yeah, great job by the lead high defense there. Gave up the one first down, but able to bend and not break at the end of that drive. The big weapon this game is, isn't what we expected coming in, right? But Snyder, the tight end. We'll see if they try to go back to him. Yet again, he's got the big four catches in this game for Lehigh. The huddle to see where Durbin, and there he is, yeah, popping exactly. out in the clear where Durbin Hilton is. Injured late in regulation. The Evan Bibbins this whole game and now on the field for this opening play. Doesn't look happy about it either. Yeah, it looked like he's talking to himself on his way off the field. He wants to be in there. We'll see how they do defending Bibbins without him. Of the Fordham fans, Zathan Hill inside the 20, inside the 15. Wrestled out of bounds, a good gain on first down for the Mountain Hawks. It was Hill's 94-yard touchdown run that gave Lehigh the lead, the last lead they had. Fordham got even on its next possession. And now here we are in overtime. The Mountain Hawks need three to tie, a touchdown to wins it. Hill tries the right side, and he's inside the 10. And Hill, the big physical back, and now that we're in overtime, after four hard quarters of football, maybe that Fordham defensive front wearing down a little bit. Second and five for the Mountains. Two plays, and they've gained 17 yards. Hill again, to the outside, stopped near the two yard line. Once he cleared initial contact, it looked like he might have a chance to score, but Greenhagen helped deny him. Yeah, real sure tackle by Greenhagen. Right here, yep. And they drag him down. But first and goal. From the two. A touchdown wins it for Lehigh. It'd be their third consecutive victory. And they're second in a row to open up Patriot League play. And both of those would be on the road at Colgate two weeks ago. Today, here in the Bronx, first time today, Lehigh throws their other quarterback into the game, Addison Schaup. And Fordham calls a timeout. He'll this as well. 
Yeah, Fordham a timeout just to figure out what Lehigh might want to do here with the backup quarterback in there. Schalp's a runner. Last appeared in their game against Merrimack. He scored in relief the only Lehigh win. We have not seen him at Colgate. Didn't see him here today until right now in overtime. He's going to try to be the closer in this one. And he's still in yep. there. Hill is not, though. Rashawn Allen has taken over as the back. Got up from that last run, reaching at his left hamstring. A touchdown wins it for Lehigh. First in the Allen can't go anywhere. And yeah, we'll see if Schaub stays in the game now after that didn't work. A loss of yardage on first down. Hill is back after missing one play. But Schaup stays out there. Lehigh changing a lot of personnel in between plays. Coming right with Schaup. He's going to throw it front of the end zone. And he missed Bibbins cross. Had a step but they can't connect. Well, well in front of the receiver. Here in the Bronx, it's now third and goal. They've lost two. Back to the four. Schaup trying to run it himself to the outside. Imperati from behind. You got to wonder if Lehigh maybe overthinking things a little bit with Schaup. If, if indeed Monaco is still healthy and could be in the game. To bring Schaup in after he sits on the bench through the entire game goal line and it, it didn't go well it sets up the field goal try yeah to be honest i was watching hill on that last play i didn't know where monaco went and but multiple plays leads me to believe that he's not healthy right now this is to extend the game from austin henning he just gets it away and he got knocked over the kick is good to tie the game but the flag for running into the kicker changes everything, and Biggs Frazier is hurt for Fordham. It's a personal foul. It's half the distance to the goal line. It resets to first down for Lehigh, and Biggs Frazier is injured. It looked like as he comes flying in, watch his head yeah. snap back off the right knee of Henning. And Biggs Frazier has been getting around that edge all day. Oh, there's the good sign for Fordham. James Biggs Frazier able to get up and walk off the field after injuring himself, trying to block the tying field goal. But in doing that, he's called for roughing the kicker. So the tying field goal comes off the board, and Lehigh gets a first and goal from the four-yard line. Schaup still in there at quarterback for Lehigh. Rashawn Allen running straight ahead, and Fordham's defense continues to stand strong. We've talked about the penalties all day long for Fordham and how much they've hurt them here throughout the game, and there's one more here in overtime. Rams kicked a field goal to start OT. Lehigh won the coin toss, chose to play defense first. They got as close as the two-yard line. Three straight stops from Fordham led to the field goal attempt, which led to the flag, which led to the new set of downs here with Schaup still in for Monaco. A touchdown wins this one instantly for Lehigh. Schaup throw in end zone wide open. It's Bibbins, and it's a Lehigh win. 
and Bibbins out there catching it and no Dervin Hilton to defend him. They've been going up against each other all day long, but Hilton getting hurt at the end of regulation, not in there defensively, and we knew eventually they would try to find Bibbins. What a win for Tom Gilmore's team. Their backup quarterback in in overtime, and they lose one of the best wide receivers in the Patriot League at the worst possible time. Devin Bibbins, the catch, the touchdown. It's a Lehigh win, 30-27 in overtime. A great game against two teams who showed up today at 1-0 in league play. And it's Lehigh that leaves it at 2-0 with a big road win. Devin Bibbins, 10 catches, a couple of touchdowns, including the game winner here in overtime. A really good one on this Saturday afternoon. It's Lehigh that leaves with the W. Today's game was produced and directed by the one and only David Bernard Santana for his entire crew and my partner Tim McMaster. I'm Andrew Bogish. Thanks as always for joining us. We'll see you again soon for more Fordham football right here on the Patriot League Network.